Hi, I'm just hanging out here on Jupiter, getting more stupider. But luckily, you all are making me smarter. So maybe you found my channel because of my SNR app, or because you saw my video on Pavel Bakhtinov. But did you know I also made an astro sharpening tool? You can use it for free. There's no catch. In fact, I have made it better. It can now sharpen color images, for example. In this video, I'll review the app and show what those improvements are. I'll then tell you how you can download it for yourself. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. All right. So what is this tool of mine? It's a neural network that uses a grid of pixels from a blurry image to try to predict whether you will subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Oops. I mean, to predict the central pixel of a sharpened image. In other words, it is a model that tries to figure out how to deconvolve an image that has been convolved with a point spread function one pixel at a time. And it did pretty well. At this point, you may be asking yourself, is this the same thing as Blur Exterminator? My answer is, is no, not really. Blur Exterminator is more complex. Based on what I've heard from Russell Croman, the model probably has upwards of 2 million parameters. The model I created only has around 50,000 parameters. And the structure is quite a bit different. But does that mean it's better? Probably. But neural networks are weird. Just because you have 40 times the number of parameters doesn't mean the model is 40 times better. It could be 100 times better, or it could be 2 times better. It might be nice to compare the two models at some point, but I digress. Of course, it goes without saying that my original model was not perfect. No model is perfect. But some models are useful, and I wanted to make this neural network model more useful. I've been getting feedback from the community about how to improve it. And these are the main points. 1. Generally, those who have used it are impressed. So here are a few quotes. This tool is amazing compared to the tedious process of deconvolution that most of the time doesn't work for me. And I'm pretty impressed. It works damn well. Looks awesome. Luckily, those users also gave me constructive feedback. The feedback can be boiled down into a few points. One, the noise gets sharpened a bit too much, especially in low SNR areas. Two, it's disappointing that it does not do color images. Three, the output image size is a couple of pixels off center from the original. And four, it doesn't sharpen distorted stars very well. This update mainly deals with the first three points, although you'll see that I did try to address the fourth point too. Here are a couple of before and after images of the first model that users sent me. And thank you to anyone who did send me feedback, by the way. So let's quickly review how well the first model did. I think you can see that the first model sharpens pretty well, but let's deal with the feedback on what I've done. First, the images, especially in low signal to noise areas, became even noisier. This is mainly due to the fact that the trending images I used came from Hubble, and Hubble images have very high signal to noise ratios. At first, I tried adding noise to the blurred trending images, and I didn't add noise to the unblurred target images. So the neural network had two tasks to learn, to unblur and denoise. Those things are kind of opposites. So for the new version, I added sun and Gaussian noise to the target or the unblurred images and to the, to the input blurred images. What does that mean? Well, it just means that I added some noise to the blurred training images after I blurred them and then added the same noise to the target unblurred images. 
the neural network should then be able to figure out that, hey, this noisy stuff is the same in both the training and target images. I shouldn't do anything to that. And I think it worked pretty well. Let's look at the starless iris nebula that we saw before. Here is the original image. And here is the first version of the sharpening tool. And here is the second version. You can see that the noise is significantly reduced, while the core of the iris has been sharpened. Nice. Let's now compare the new sharpening tool to the original image. It really hasn't added any noise to the original image either. Also nice. We can see the same thing in the Andromeda Galaxy image. It is sharper, but the noise has not been sharpened. However, comparing it to the original sharpening tool, it isn't quite as aggressive when it sharpens. But that's okay. The new GUI will let you choose which model you want to use. Okay, let's get to point number two. The sharpening tool can now sharpen color images. I know what you're going to ask. Will it take three times as long? The answer is no. It will sharpen a color image almost as fast as a black and white one. How? You might ask. Well, it has something to do with magic. Yeah, let's let's go with that magic. It's magic. Oh, you're not satisfied with that answer? Well, I think that this deserves a whole video. But let's just say that it has something to do with extracting the luminance values from the image. Just make sure that you do the sharpening before you do any color corrections on the image. It shouldn't matter really that much, but just in case, try to sharpen a color image before you finalize the colors. Okay, let's go on to point number three. The result doesn't line up with the original image. I fixed that. The current neural network does not sharpen the outer edges of the image, and that's why things weren't lining up. There's just not enough data on the edges of the image for the tool to sharpen it reliably. So I fixed it by adding the five rows or columns of pixels to the outside of the sharpened image. It should now line up, but just make sure you know that you may have to crop the outside of the image a bit because the outside unsharpened portion and the inside majority part of the image might not match. Okay, let's get to point number four. The stars can get wonky, especially at the edges. Okay, unfortunately, th this isn't something that I, I fixed. Let me show you what I mean. Here is an image of Medlot 15 I took last year with my Ritchie Creation Telescope. Collimation wasn't perfect, and you can see the image is pretty soft. So after I used the first iteration of my sharpening tool, things got quite a bit sh sharper. But the second version of the tool sharpens nicely too, and the star shapes in the corners didn't get much better. This is something that I did try to fix during training. Instead of using a simple Gaussian blur, I tried to blur the images a bit more randomly in the X and Y directions. I think the model needs more training on this though. Stay tuned as I try to work on this for a future update. So how can you download it? Well, first let's get this out of the way. The tool is currently only for Windows, but if you have a Windows machine or it can emulate Windows, go to my GitHub page. The link is in the description. Click the green code button and download all the files as a zip folder. Unzip the folder on your PC and find the executable file and run it. After that, a window will pop up and the first thing you'll see is the processing chunk size slider. You really don't have to touch that unless you have like a huge image that is like a 20 by 20 mosaic that you're processing. If that's the case, then you should probably move the slider up to 750 or something. Or if you have a really small image, then you can probably move it down. But for most cases, just leave it. It's fine. Then you have the option to choose which model you'd like. You can use the first beta model that aggressively sharpens everything, including the noise. This option might be good if you have a very high signal to noise ratio image. Otherwise, the newest model, I mean, the model that I've been bragging about this whole video, is selected by default. Then choose whether your image is color or black and white. Do all of these steps before you load the TIFF file. Then you can upload a TIFF file. Make sure there's no alpha channel though, um, it should, so it should be a flattened image. Anyway, after that, just wait. It will take a few minutes to sharpen each pixel in the image, and you'll see a progress bar pop up that will estimate the percentage of pixels that have been sharpened. After it disappears, in about 30 seconds or a minute, the sharpen preview will pop up, and then you can go ahead and download the file. Well, that's about it for this video. Go ahead and try out my new sharpening tool. Tell me which model works better for you, the first or original release or the new one.
Thanks for watching.